Hello everyone, my name is Roya and I am finally going to be reviewing my favorite books of all time. So I just completed a reread of my, basically my favorite book and it's two sequels that are actually like equally good to be honest, but I still keep saying that this is my favorite book. So uh, Oryx and Crake, um, The Year of the Flood and Mad Adam, all by Margaret Atwood. I have to tell you guys, first of all, that these books are nothing like anything else that Margaret Atwood has written um, thus far. This is a sci-fi dystopian world in which um, things are kind of, I mean, technology is more advanced, but to be honest, like really it's not so far advanced as to not be right around the corner. So it's uh, kind of weird and creepy that way. So anyway, uh, just to kind of summarize what these books are even about. Um, so we start with Oryx and Crake, which you can see my copy is like, I've literally read this book, um, four times and you can see it's literally held together by tape on the back. But anyway, so, uh, this, uh, first book starts off with our main character, Snowman, who is living in a post-apocalyptic world where he, uh, believes himself to be the last remaining human. He is basically in charge of taking care of these, like, genetically modified humans that were basically grown in a lab that uh, his former best friend turned enemy basically made according to his standards. Like they don't have long childhoods or anything. They literally like, um, once they're like a year old, they already look like they're three or four or something basically because we spend too much, we waste too much of our lives being babies. And then they basically drop dead of natural causes, which is basically no reason at age 30 or something because they don't get any diseases or anything. And there's no point in living longer than that, basically. Like, it's really weird. And so they're, um, it's, it's just really odd. So basically, since these people are all like maximum seven years old, even though they're full on adults, for the most part, um, they know like nothing. And so he's basically having to in this apocalyptic world where nobody else is around except him and these people, he has to, like, tell them about different, uh, basically explain things to them that they have questions about in terms that they understand, which is really not always the easiest thing at all because he basically can't use any expressions, for instance, otherwise they take it literally and they wonder what that is and all this other stuff. It's so weird. But anyway, um, so uh, through this, we kind of get a story in flashback. Um, back to when Snowman was a boy named Jimmy and his uh, mother was, his uh, father worked in a, a lab type place and his mother live his mother like ran away and destroyed a bunch of information and uh, basically went rogue and all this other stuff so it basically like goes all the way through when he meets his best friend and then his best friend ends up releasing a pandemic that kills everybody and all this other stuff that you basically like know going into the book what ends up happening um, but it's all the details of how it happened and everything that kind of go into it. Then the second book is The Year of the Flood. This basically um, is the same story, the same timeline, but told in a different way from different characters' flashbacks. Um, so we have uh, Ren and Toby, who are two different characters. Like, they knew each other and they knew the main characters of the first book um, in the dystopian world and all of that before the apocalypse happened, all of that stuff. Uh, but it's basically the same, it's basically a whole different corner of the story. So we do see the same world that kind of went on and what happened and everything from a totally different perspective and different uh, parts of what the setting is like, which is really fascinating. So both of the main characters that we get in this book um, were essentially kind of raised in a, um, in this place with these people called the God's Gardeners who are, how do I explain this even? Like they're basically, um, not even, almost, they almost take after like Amish people in that they don't do the whole vanity dealio. They all just kind of wear brown sacks for clothing, pretty much that type of stuff. But they're very like, um, their ideas are kind of in the right place as far as, uh, what technology is bad and what, um, you know, 
uh, pills and medications are bad and all this other stuff. Um, but the way that they treat stuff like mental health is so backwards. It's like really odd. But basically the whole deal, uh, the whole thing is that they're living this like very natural lifestyle. And both of the main characters initially, like they weren't from there initially. They came there from a like crappy, you know, the crappy world out there. Um, and then they eventually have to go back. They have different reasons for having to leave the gods gardeners and go back to where they each came from um kind of and have to uh figure out how to do life in the um shitty dystopian world and of course uh then we get their whole uh, storyline in the apocalypse as well and finally uh, the third book um mad adam is basically about uh just the apocalypse happening where I mean we do get some flashback chapters but for the most part it's uh taking like the flashback chapters are um in the form of different characters kind of telling each other corners of their stories that were missed in the first couple of books uh, but for the most part the, bo the whole book takes place during the apocalypse where all of the main characters have already gotten together um, by the end of the second one they've all already figured out that they're each all alive all of that and they're trying to figure out how to survive from there and what to do and this one also just has a very amusing quality of, you know, all the different characters who weren't dealing with the um, genetically modified humans um, suddenly having to deal with them and having to figure out how to talk to these people who, like, don't know what anything in the previous world was or anything. Um, and having to tell them basically the same stories but in a different way that they'll understand. So the series as a whole has this really interesting way of basically it has a lot of different themes to it and a lot of different messages. It's actually really hard to compile in just one kind of thing, but the whole thing is that, you know, you don't know who to trust. You don't know, you know, you can't you can't trust the world around you at all because of course nobody's right and everyone's everyone's just greedy pretty much and there's you know there's a really good part i mean in the first book especially um it talks pretty extensively about how um yeah you could cure all the diseases but of course um that would leave the you know big pharma or whatever and um everyone um everyone in the medicine industry in the medical industry like without any new money coming in if everyone's just fine so of course what do they do create new diseases and it's it's just this really great way of um of wording it that kind of makes you really think about it and it has a lot of other a lot of things like that where um, you kind of have to really think and go oh wow I didn't really think of it that way and um, basically it's really really I, I mean it definitely took me a long time to review this series um, for a good reason um, basically just because it is hard to explain all the messages that are in this it you really do have to read the series this book is treated like I mean the series is treated like a literary fiction in a lot of ways but Margaret Atwood has actually won uh, like science fiction awards for it stuff like that um, and it really is science fiction there are like bunnies that were made to like glow and there are pigs that are used to grow extra kidneys and stuff on for people's kidney transplants all kinds of stuff like it's really really um it's clear that it's science fiction but it's just the fact that you know some people can't get past the fact that it takes place in almost a modern day-esque setting with slightly more advanced technology pretty much if you go into it expecting literary fiction you're obviously gonna be really uh surprised to find a hell of a lot of sci-fi elements basically so anyway um this is basically my favorite series ever and I highly recommend you read it uh, because I really can't tell you everything in a review so anyway uh let me know if you've read these books and what your thoughts are and I will see you very soon with a new video bye